So each of the part B's wants me to graph a cube root. I'm going to do essentially the same structure when I'm finding the graphs of cube roots, but instead of equal, equaling to 16, 9, 4, 1, 0, I'm going to set equal to 27, equal to 9, equal to 1, equal to 0, equal to negative 1, equal to negative 9. Should I do one more? One, two, three. That's seven points. Um, ugh, how about equal to negative 27? The negatives aren't going to be an issue because when the index is odd, the cube root of a negative number is a negative number. So let me get my table going. Make an x column and a y column. First, I'm going to do x minus 2 equal to 27 add to, add to, get x equal to 29. Second one, x minus, this shouldn't be 9, that should be 8. 2 cubed is 8. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Bad, 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 bad. We would have gotten decimals, which I don't care to graph if I don't have to. So now x minus 2 equals to 8. Plus 2, plus 2. It's going to give me 10 would have picked that up real quickly if I found out I had the decimals come up when I found the y's. I would have realized I made an error. No new. This is not new, it's just different numbers. You might need your calculator to push through some of the work here with the negatives. Done with my X's, now I'm going to get my Y's. I'm going to get my y's. I'm just going to press buttons even though I could do it by hand. First y, I do shift and square root for cube root and then change that x to a 29 and then subtract 2. And I get 3. Now I'm going to go back, change the 29 to a 10 and I get 2. Go back, change the 10 to a 3 and get 1. Go back and change the 3 to a 2 and get 0. In a square root, that's a good thing. It was kind of the, the end. In a cube root, it's not that interesting. Plug the 1 in now and get negative 1 because the cube root of a negative number is a negative number. And then plug in negative 6. And get negative 2 and then negative 25 and get negative 3. If you're careful picking your x's you get really nice y's. You can really see what's going on with the graph. I didn't get any errors like when I my calculator plugged in negative 6 it did the cube root of negative 6 minus 2. It gives the cube root of negative 8 and when an index is ne odd and the radicand is negative, it results in a negative number. If that was a square root, you'd get a no solution. But with the cube root, you just get a negative number. So now best I can, I'm going to plot the points. I made my graph too big, but it's okay. First point, I'm estimating 29 going up to 3. And then 10 and 2. And then estimating 3, really estimating 3, it's somewhere between 0 and 10. It's closer to the 0 than it is the 10. And then 2 and 0, that's a really close on my window. If I made you know, 10 marks between 0 and 10, it's the, it's the second one. And then 1 and negative 1. And then negative 6 and negative 2. I'm just estimating these x's, and then negative 25 and negative 3. Cube roots all have this kind of s look to them. 
um, it's gonna look more like this. Like the one half looks like a square root and the other half looks like the square root flipped over. And the graph continues forever. It goes up and to the right forever and it continues forever. It goes down and to the left forever. So the instructions for all the problems between five and 11 are make a table what I did first. Sketch a graph, that's what I did second. And then find the domain. Well, this graph extends in both directions without end. There really isn't a left edge. The, if I, you know, if there was a negative infinity, the graph would attend to it. The start of my domain is negative infinity. Similarly, there's not a right edge. The graph keeps going up and to the right forever. For the x's, for the domains, it's negative to positive infinity for the domain. And every cube root we're going to graph is going to have a domain of negative to positive infinity because every cube root that we're about to graph extends from the far left edge to the far right edge of the x-axis. So for us, all cube root graphs, they're going to look the same. They're all going to have a domain. Double round parentheses, starting with negative infinity, ending with positive infinity. Similarly, there is no bottom. Like if I said the bottom of the graph was right there and I wanted my range to start at 6, this graph is going to go, if you go further to the right, uh, further to the left, it will cross any horizontal line that you can draw. This graph will eventually, you know, even cross that horizontal line. Because the graph goes down forever and it continues to get lower, the start of my range or the bottom of the graph is going to be at negative infinity. Similarly, like if I said that's the top of the graph, pretty quickly the graph goes beyond that and it doesn't have a top. The graph keeps going up forever no matter what horizontal line I can draw. If I go far enough off the screen, the graph's going to go and top it. All cube roots that we're going to graph have a range of negative to positive infinity. And that's the one of the nice things about these as I don't even have to think about the domain. I don't even think have to think about the range. All cube root graphs that we're about to do have the double infinities for the range and for the domain. In fact, usually if I'm um, writing up a key, I just write down the domain and the range on a cube root without even um, thinking about what's going on. And then I, I'll look at the graph to see that it makes sense, but I won't actually um, do this much work. So, 8B, make a table, sketch a graph, write the domain and the range absolutely guaranteed because I'm graphing a cube root and it's a kind of a binomial under a cube root that any cube root that we're going to graph that has a binomial under the as the radicand is going to have the double infinity negative to positive infinity for both the domain and the range. I want to get my table going. I'm going to go x plus 2 equal to 27, x plus 2 equal to 8, x plus 2 equal to 1, x plus 2 equal to 0, x plus 2 equal to negative 1, x plus 2 equal to negative 8, x plus 2 equal to negative 27. First x is going to be 25. Second x is going to be 6. Doesn't really look like 25. Third x is going to be negative 1. Fourth x is going to be negative 2. Fifth x is 
going to be negative 3, 6x, negative 8 minus 2 is going to be negative 10. Last x, going to be negative 29. Now I'll just get the y's. First one I do shift cube root. The cube root of 25 plus 2 gives me a 3. Now I'm going to change the 25 to a 6 to a 6. Get the cube root of 6 plus 2 which is 2. Then I'm going to change the 6 to a negative 1, get 1. Then I change the negative 1 to negative 2, and get 0. Change the negative 2 to negative 3, and get error. Oh, I made a mistake with the double negative. Let me get rid of one of those negatives. Change, you saw the decimal because I made a mistake. Change the negative 3 to negative 10 and get negative 2. Change the negative 10 to negative 29 and get negative 3. So the best I can, I'll plot those points. So first one, x equal to 25, y equal to 3. That's fairly easy on this graph. And then x equal to 6, I have to estimate somewhere between 0 and 10, a little more than halfway. And then negative 1, comma 1, it's pretty close to the y-axis. It's just right off to the left of the y-axis. And then just a little bit over, and at 0, I get the point negative 2, 0. And then just a little bit over, not really even halfway over, I'm probably a little bit too far over, negative 3, negative 1. And then negative 10, negative 2. And negative 29, negative 3. It's going to have the same kind of S shape. So I kind of draw it in segments. The right segment kind of looks a little bit like a square root graph. And then the left segment looks like it kind of flipped over in some sense. So that's a reasonable graph. I've made a table, sketched a graph, and the reason the domain is negative to positive infinity is because no matter where I try to bound this graph, it's going to go beyond. Similarly, the reason the range is positive, negative to positive infinity is no matter where I try to say there's a top, if I stretch the graph far enough, it's going to go above any top and below any bottom. So for our class, there's no even thoughts. If I'm asked graphing a cube root, the domain is negative to positive infinity, the range is negative to positive infinity. One more problem. It doesn't matter that um, it doesn't matter that minus three. Um, to get my y's in problem ten b, I'm going to go x minus two equal to twenty seven, x minus the two equal to eight, x minus the two equal to one, x minus two equal to zero x minus 2 equal to negative 1, x minus 2 equal to negative 8, x minus 2 equal to negative 27. The nice thing about this, I just did all those computations. That's why I put this sheet back up. I'm going to get exactly the same x values because the radicand's the same. The minus 3 that's after the radical, it's going to impact the y's, impact where the, how the graph looks a little bit, but my table's going to be the same because the radicand's the same. This x minus 2 equal to 27 would give me 29. The x minus 2 equal to 8 will give me 10. So the table I'm going to pick off is borrowed the x's from my last graph because all the algebra is the same. So I'm going to get 29, 10, 3, 2, 1, negative 6, and negative 25. I can't copy the y's down. I actually could get pretty close, though. Um, if I just took all the y's and subtracted 3, it would work. Because these functions are the same, except the one my 
6b doesn't have the minus 3 that 10b has. And, um, well, let me just do them. So I took the table from 6 because the radicand is the same. So shift cube root 29 minus 2 bump out minus 3. And I get 0. And then change the 29 to a 10. Get my negative 1. Change the 10. I wouldn't want to do this without technology. Change the 10 to a 3 and get negative 2. You might see a pattern. You might be able to get the Y's without doing so much button pressing. And if you like doing the Y's by hand, I don't care. You can do them by hand. It's just um, This is just arithmetic and this is an algebra course. We might as well use technology to do the stuff that is tedious. So there's my values. I'm going to plot them. I know what the domain and range is going to be for us. All cube root graphs that we're going to do, they won't have a left edge. They won't have a right edge. The domain is going to be negative to positive infinity. And all cube root graphs we're going to do won't have a bottom. They'll go down forever. They won't have a top. They'll go up forever. I don't need to even do anything but write those down if I'm confident and that I am confident. So first point, 29 comma 0 seems like a good estimate. 10 comma negative 1 3 is about there, comma negative 2. 2 is really close to 3 and now I go down to negative 3 and then 1 is even just a little bit over and then negative 4 and then negative 6 about there, negative 5, and then finally a nice one, negative 25, negative 6. So this one, how does it work? Goes like that, goes like that, and like that. It's not a thing of beauty, but it's adequate. Definitely not looking for perfection. I'm sure your graphs look better than mine almost 100% of the time. That's everything I need. Uh, the graph is going to extend beyond any horizontal vertical lines I drew this way or that way. It's going to extend beyond any horizontal lines that I would draw that way or that way. That's why it's a double infinity, negative to positive infinity for both the domain and the range. Two more sections and we get our chapter 4 tests.